All right, break this down. You can purchase a small bouquet containing seven white and five pink roses from Rosani's Roses for $18.98. A larger bouquet with 13 white and seven pink roses costs $32.30. Based on these prices, how much should you expect Rosani to charge for a dozen roses that are all pink? We're going to ignore this question at first. This is something that has been tripping you up. You guys are used to elementary school problems where you can look at the question and snap to a solution. We're going to ignore the question. Right? Ignore the question. This is actually a follow-up question. And a lot of high school level questions are follow-up questions. There's work you need to do before you're able to answer that. We're going to start with defining two variables. What are two basic building blocks that we don't know the value of in this scenario? Two basic building blocks. Cost of one white rose. And the cost of one pink rose. Those are two things that I do not know the value of, right? And they're basic building blocks. We're gonna we're gonna call one of them X. We're gonna call the other one Y. It really doesn't matter which is which, as long as you label them and are aware what you are calling what. Variables defined. Two equations. Our scenario will. Be Build our equations for us. We got this in red. Seven times the cost of a white rose plus five times the cost of a pink rose should give me 1898. Seven X's plus five Y's equals 1898. And right here. 13 white roses, 7 pink roses, so 13 times the price of a white rose plus 7 times the cost of a pink rose equals 32.30. Yes, two variables defined, two equations built based directly from the words in the problem. Now, a graph. And let's see where these two graphs cross each other. I'm going to go to Desmos.com and choose Graphing Calculator. Type my two equations in, or I might be able to just copy and paste. Beautiful. We can see that there's one point that's shared by both of those graphs. If I want to zoom in on it, uh, I can also change change my graph settings if I want to spread this farther apart. Let my x's only go from maybe negative one to negative five, and my y's go from all right, I'm just making some changes to try to center the action of this graph. But here we go. So in Desmos, you could actually hover over this point right here where they're crossing. And it gives me 1.79 comma 1.29. 1.79 comma 1.29. Two, nine. X and Y. And what did those things represent? 1.79 was my cost of white roses. 1.29 is going to be my cost of pink roses. Now that I have the information I want, now I can answer this follow up question based on these prices. How much is it going to cost for a dozen roses that are all pink? Uh, 
dollar twenty nine times twelve, right? Fifteen dollars forty eight cents. Bang. Now, in the process of doing all that, I have shown the work. All right. There's one more thing that I'm going to want. I'm going to want to see your graph for each of these situations that you do on your own. So you're going to need to take a screenshot of your graph. Make sure you capture the point where lines cross and get it into your slides.